very, very happy to be able to do this video, finally, and for multiple reasons, because I get to talk about Renantera Mona Chica. I get to do that in a care collab, together with Karin's Orchids, with What's Up Orchids, and Gabriella Carson. So welcome to this care collab for Renanthera Mona Chica. But there are other reasons that I'm so pleased to be able to do this video and talk about my Mona Chica is because I have one. Yes, this is Renanthera Mona Chica 2.0 in my collection because I already lost one last year. And last year I had my Mona Chica for two, three years in a Leka with self-watering setup which was doing really well. She was fine, she was growing, and then finally she did bloom for me last year. But on producing the flower spike, I noticed how many leaves were falling off the base. And then I let her bloom, and then I only realized far too late that it was actually stem rot. Is that because of the setup of self-watering in Lekka? I did not have her any lower in the pot than I have my little 2.0 right now. So I'm not really entirely sure. I'm going to boil the stem rot down to my watering habits during the summer, when even though the Renanthera Mona Chica is in self-watering with Lekka and has plenty of water, I had a very, very dry top layer on the surface of my pot. And I would go around during the day, several times a day, and just spray the orchid down on the surface. And that is where I'm thinking that was too much for her. I was trying to protect the dry top layer and she might have preferred a top dry layer. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. And that is why you see my setup now for my 2.0 in an orchid top. And there's a lot of ceramics because they do like their water. And then I have lava rock on the top to see if that would work better for around the stem. I'm also really pleased to be able to finally address the mineral buildup on the leaves as to how I got her late, was it, was it, was it, was it, was it? Let me think, September, I believe, of 20. That's when mine declined, or was it in the summer? Not entirely sure, but I never touched her. I never cleaned her up properly because, huh, she was one of the most expensive Renantheras I've ever, ever bought, as her shipping was 37 euros from Patrons Orchidin in Belgium. Shocker. So I was quite desperate, yes, and I paid the price for the shipping. Two other orchids snuck in, meanwhile. <laughs> Otherwise, she would have been too expensive. But I'm, yeah, I'm glad I can now address the mineral deposit that she came with. And the reason I didn't address that before was because she was kind of quetched into a mount kind of a setup with sphagnum moss in between. It wasn't very pretty. And I was so freaked out about my sudden demise, my opinion, sudden demise of my original Renanthera Mona Chica, that all I wanted to do was get this one in a pot, leave her alone and hope that she would live because you see, the thing is that she's a warm to hot grower, and I can do that. But uh, she's also from the Philippines, where there's a lot, a lot of humidity. And I can't do that in my climate. So I have real difficulty with actually um, growing this orchid and making her happy, keeping the roots aerated, providing her with humidity. And now I'm sort of a little bit paranoid about hopefully not getting stem rot this coming season because, you know, I will need to somehow keep the surface moist, wet, damp, humid. So my, my next thought was for her was to put her in this orchid top because I've had with my angraecums very good success with the orchid top setup. There's a lot of aeration around the roots. There's a lot of humidity coming from the tray, which at this point in time is empty, but we'll take care of that just now. And I feel that this setup could help the Mona Chica as well. I really, really hope so. This summer will be the test. Remain to be seen if it's going to work out. What I'm really, really surprised by is the fact that the Mona Chica already has this one 
already has a spike. I don't know if you can see that in there, but hang on a second. There. I find that pretty amazing. I was not expecting her to bloom at this size at all. And what I found when I took her off the shelf today was another second little root poking out right here. So yeah, I'm really, um, this is amazing. This one I've been watching for a while now, and I'm so happy it's going down into the pot. Please excuse the background noise. I haven't hoisted my flag to say silence. Silence. Right, so sorry about any background noise, but as you can see, the crusties here are quite intense and may not come off on the first application, but there's a lot already coming off. Before I go on, I'm using a 50-50 solution of RO water with pure lemon that I squeezed. It's quite a strong solution, but you can see how thick this residue is on the leaves. So that's what I'm trying to get off. And it may not all happen in one go, but at least I'm able to now address her because of the fact that I can see she's rooted in. So yeah, she's from the Philippines, hot to warm grower. What I do is probably not gonna be the same this year. I won't be as radical on the misting as I was with my other one in self-watering because now I have a nice saucer in order to keep a little bit of more humidity around the orchid herself. And I'm going to be using more microfiber as opposed to targeting anything on the surface. I'm going to add more microfiber and I'm gonna direct my sprayer to that microfiber for added humidity around the top. See, my summers, I only get like 30% humidity, 40 is a humid day in my climate. <laughs> so that's not, at anywhere near what this one would enjoy. And right now in the winter, she is under blurple lights continuously. And I'm glad to see that they are working because of the anthocyanin on the leaves. Perfect color. This is how they should look. And my winter temps have dropped in my dining room to 14 degrees Celsius, which is a little bit lower than I would like, especially for this one. But it seems to be working. I haven't lost her yet. And again, the test will come later this season where I will have her outdoors in a southern facing orientation behind white curtains. But it'll be a shaded kind of setup, even though it has a lot of bright light because of the angle of the sun being right above the little patio that I call my blooming alley. So she won't be in direct sun during the summer. Right now, I'm not even fertilizing her. I haven't fertilized her all winter because I wasn't sure that any of these roots up here were viable. And I think this one is a dead root. So I, I didn't apply any fertilizer. All I did was just administer plain RO water in the bowl. And when it was like a very, very breezy day, I allowed myself to mist the microfiber to keep her humidity up because in my winters, I do have more humidity than I have in my summers, but never above 55% or something like that. You know, I'm, I'm trying to do the balancing act here between keeping her as warm as possible without supplementing with heaters or heat mats, but also keeping her humidity environment happy around her so that she doesn't feel or get dried out. So far, again, I am super pleased that the fine, fine balancing act is working and that this root is going down. And then this one, that was new to me today. Super happy. I've got a little bit of mineral buildup on the lava rock, which is strange seeing as I do not have any fertilizer going on. So this is just plain RO water and I'm just misting around that lava rock with that root just to dissolve a little bit of those minerals. And then I make sure just to encourage that root now to go down and not start to go elsewhere because on the shelf that she lives in, there's more pots next to her. And if that root thinks there's more humidity going on in that direction, it's gonna go out. I don't want that. For this orchid, I would be much safer if I have one root going into the dish. And then I know I have a water root that I can definitely, definitely keep happy during my summers. 
and that is all I do. No fertilizer for the time being and probably not until her real strong growing starts. If I forfeit the spikes because I'm not fertilizing, I'm okay with that as well. I don't mind if this orchid doesn't bloom this year. If by her own strength, she can push out a spike and bloom with one or two blooms, that is great, I'll take it. But I'm not going to now insist on fertilizing. My temperatures are not warm enough for her yet. Anything above 20 degrees, and that is her happy place. But right now, I don't have 20 degrees to offer her during the day, maybe, but indoors it's always a little bit cooler. And I'm not schlepping her in and out as I do with other orchids, because to me, she's not as established as I would like to see her. And that's why she's being babied more than I normally would at this stage of growth. I lost my other one when she was around about, eh, maybe this high, three or four more leaves. I lost my other one. So I'm not home and dry with this little Renanthera monachica just yet. And that's why I'm being super cautious. 20 degrees Celsius, when I have those temperatures, then that's when I'm going to start fertilizing. Even if she is not in bloom or is in bloom, I'm trying to grow this orchid to strength as opposed to waiting for blooms to come, if that makes sense. So I want to say thank you very, very much to Karin's Orchid. What's up Orchids and Gabriella Carson for joining me on this care collab here with my Renanthera Mona Chica. Really appreciate it. The links of the channels will be in the description below. And I would highly recommend you check out their videos and how they care for their Renanthera Mona Chica. If this is a setup that doesn't resonate with you in your climate, different climates, different growth methods, different successes, and that is the beauty of these Care Collab videos that, you know, not everybody has access to an orchid top. Not everybody grows inorganic. But in my case, this is how I care for my Renanthera Mona Chica. And I hope, I hope that this time next year, I'm not talking about a 3.0. <laughs> Keeping my fingers crossed here. <laughs> really, really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Thank you so very, very much to the channels that participated. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. At the moment, the care collabs are coming in thick and fast, which is great. We need to get some more care videos out there on these beautiful individual orchids. So keep them coming. If you have a channel, if you make videos, and if you have a Renanthera Mona Chica and would like to be included in further updates and do videos together with us, please feel free to email me. My email is in the description below and then I'll put you on the list and we shall be in touch when it comes to future updates, which will be sporadic depending on who has what going on. If somebody has something to say, there's no plan, no schedule. First of all, let's introduce everybody to this beautiful little species from the Philippines and get more people on board. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Thank you ever, ever so much. Take care and please stay safe. Bye.